So, to make this animation play for more than two seconds, first of all, let's move the work area segment to the beginning of the timeline. We'll also need to move the layer itself here. Do it while holding the shift key. Now we can expand the work area, close the layer, and move on. Now we need to nest this layer into a pre-comp. We can use the shortcut Ctrl Shift C to do it. Now, change the name to Swag Comp. After that, make sure both are selected, and press OK. And don't forget to switch back to the Selection tool. Now, as you can see, the borders of this layer are really large. There is a lot of empty space here. In order to reduce the size of this pre-comp, we need to enter it. Now press Ctrl K to access the composition setting of this pre-comp. Make sure preview is checked and decrease the dimensions of this comp. I think 1000 in width should be fine. And for the height, I believe 500 is good. Press OK, and let's place this layer in the center of the composition. To see the center of the composition, we can press the apostrophe key and use the action title safe guide. And now drag the layer here. You can move around with the time indicator to see that the text stays within the boundaries of the composition, and we don't move this layer too much. I think we can move it up a bit. Let's check it one more time. Alright, great, we can move on now. Now let's go back to the main composition and learn how to make this pre-comp play endlessly. Because now, the animation ends after 2 seconds. So because we've created a pre-comp that starts and ends at the same frame, we can make this pre-comp play in an endless loop using an expression. What is expression? Expression is a piece of code that you can use to automate and control various properties of your animation. It is a powerful tool that enables you to create complex animations without having to keyframe every single element manually. Let's get closer a little bit. In our case, we will use a loop out expression. To create a loop expression for a pre-comp that starts and ends with the same frame as ours. The first thing we need to do is to place the time indicator at the end of this layer. And now, right click, go to time, and select enable time remapping. You may see that the layer is still cut off in this way. That's okay. We'll fix it in a moment. What's more important is that after we click Enable Time Remapping, we need to move one frame backward and create an additional keyframe before the existing one. To do this, click here. Now we need to delete the last keyframe. Select it and press Backspace. And now, we'll create an expression for these keyframes. To do this, we need to hold down the Alt key and click on the stopwatch. This will open the expression editor. We don't need to write anything. We'll use a built-in expression. For this, let's click on the small arrow here, go to property, and select this expression. To finish the operation, let's click here on the side. We can step back a bit, and now let's extend this layer to the end of the composition. Now everything that happens between these keyframes, which is the entire animation, We'll keep repeating until the end of the composition, making the entire animation play endlessly. Next, because we know that we will duplicate this composition several times soon, and each one will be in a different color, we need to apply an effect called Fill to this composition. So let's go to the Effects panel and type Fill. Now let's drag the effect onto the composition. And now, to color it with the colors of the palette, let's go back to the Project panel, import it into the scene and scale it down while holding the shift key. Let's place it here. Now let's select the pre-comp again and go to effects controls. If you don't see this panel, you can activate it through window. All right, so select the eyedropper and select the bright color from the palette. And now let's add a cool stroke to the text pre-comp. To do this, we can right click on the layer, go to layer styles and select stroke. And there you have it. There is the stroke. And now, let's scroll down a bit until we see the layer styles parameter. Let's open the stroke here and change it a bit. Hide the background so we can see what we're doing. Now let's change the color to the dark color from the palette. 
and the thickness of the stroke to 5. Now let's close all the properties of the layer and move on. But before, let's press Ctrl S to save the project. Alright, and now, let's duplicate this composition using a shortcut Ctrl D. Now, let's create a small offset between these two layers and move this precomp a bit forward in time. Zoom in a bit and move the bottom layer three frames forward. Three frames are too much. Let's move it a bit closer. That looks better. Next, let's change the color of this bottom layer. Let's enlarge the preview panel. Hold down the spacebar and drag the preview screen here until we see the color palette. Alternatively, we can simply select it from here, press P, to bring up the position parameter, and move this layer here until we see it next to the text. And now, let's select the bottom layer and change the color of the fill effect to blue. Now let's duplicate it again. Press Ctrl D. Move the bottom layer two frames forward. And now, let's change the color to yellow. Duplicate it again, move it two frames forward, and change the color to pink. Let's do it one last time. Duplicate it, move it two frames forward, and this time sample the dark color from the palette. Now let's set the preview to fit and create a loop for this animation. So you might notice that the animation at first looks a little strange. That's because the bottom layers got moved around in the timeline. Let's see how we can fix this. First, let's go to a point in time where we see all the layers together, for example, here. Now let's select all the layers, right-click, go to Markers, and select Add Marker. This way, we can know that this is the starting point for each of the layers. And in order to create a perfect loop like we did before, when we created the text animation, let's find a point in time where the text reaches the same position as it was at the beginning. Question. What tool can help us to create a perfect loop? We will use the Take Snapshot tool. So let's take a snapshot of this frame. Now let's go to the second number 8, not the third second, because the video will be very short that way. Okay, let's stand here with the time indicator and compare this frame to the first frame we had. That's not good. Let's check this frame. We'll continue doing this until we reach the perfect moment. And here it is, at the 8th second and 4 frames. Let's create a marker here as well. Now let's shorten the work area here using the end key. And now, let's go back to the point we marked in the beginning and shorten the work area from here as well, using the B key. Now we have created a perfect loop, meaning that when the animation reaches this point, it will start playing from the beginning without us noticing when it happened. Let's press the spacebar and see how it looks. Looks great. Now let's delete the color palette. We don't need it anymore. And to prepare for the next step, let's clean up our scene. First, we'll move the time indicator to the beginning of the work area while holding the shift key. Now, we'll select all the layers. Then, we'll use the shortcut alt and left bracket to cut this section of the layers. Next, we'll place the work area and all the layers at the beginning of the timeline. Great job! Now, let's move on to the next step, where we'll discover time-saving methods for editing text layers in After Effects. But before that, you might want to take a quick break for about 10 minutes. Get up from your chair, stretch a bit, and make yourself some coffee. It'll give you a chance to recharge your brain before the next lesson. See you there.